This past weekend, we pulled off something wild and unprecedented in Magic history with the reveal of Mystery Booster 2. And today, I'm going to tell you what happened and some of what you can expect from the set. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And Mystery Booster 2 is something I've had to keep under my hat for a while. But finally, at Gen Con, I was able to reveal it in a fashion I've always wanted to, when a fan asked a question. And it's about uh, Mystery Booster and how, you know, like how much you like it, how much you enjoy the playtest cards. Um, and I actually am, I'm just going to do it. I'm really happy to announce that Mystery Booster 2 is coming. Um, it will be at Vegas later this year. So you'll be able to play it if you're going to Magic on Vegas. Um, Mystery Booster 2 on the way. Hopefully that's exciting for all of you. Cool. Yeah. 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 Woo! You see, starting on Thursday, I began handing out these mysterious invites to fans and some magic personalities alike. What were they for? People began asking questions. On Friday, when I announced the set, people began to wonder if that's what it could be for. Was this for Mystery Booster 2? And then all was revealed at Game Nights Live when Jimmy and Josh revealed both the Future Sight Command Tower and White Border Ponder. Then a fan who came on stage was given the first ever Mystery Booster 2 pack and my last invite to what I announced as the first ever Mystery Booster 2 draft. From set announce to first draft in under 24 hours. That's never happened before and probably probably will never happen again. But there we were, Saturday morning. I showed up as Agent G, my Mystery Booster alter ego. 16 players, two draft pods, and everybody seeing what's in the set for the very first time. You've probably seen a lot from this set out there on social media already, but how did this set come to be? What can you expect? Let's back up the clocks a second. I was asked to design a follow-up to the first Mystery Booster, and that meant somehow we had to one-up what was already an incredibly wild set, which featured about 1,800 cards and these hand-drawn playtest cards. We needed to go even wackier. Back when I was working on Time Spiral Remastered, we unlocked the Future Sight frames, but didn't use them there. White bordered cards were something divisive that some fans had been asking for, and love them or hate them, they definitely add to the wackiness. So in chatting through options with the architecture team, we went ahead with these and another round of playtest cards. But designing this set was going to be bigger than any one person. So I teamed up with magic designer Eric Engelhard, who I want to give a big shout out to here. He worked on compiling the cards for the set other than playtest cards. So while I was was in the mad science laboratory coming up with nonsense like TLDR and Chatzuk, Mighty Guitarist, and asking others in the company to send me any wacky ideas they had, Eric was hard at work figuring out the massive list of reprints for the set with some guidance from me. Eric did an incredible job representing a truly ridiculous number of sets here that nearly approaches every release since Mirage. And while I'm not going to spoil all the deep cuts, there's everything from March of the Machine Jumpstart exclusive Injector Crocodile to Portal Second Ages Iron Hoof Ox, and that's not even close to the wildest ones, just a taste. Our first step was that we were able to get rid of the restriction the first one had about only doing pre M15 cards in one slot. The set is full of old frame cards and hits, or misses from Magic's past. We also got even wilder and got approval to grab some digital only cards. For example, Mardu Outrider appears here for the first time from the Arena Starter Experience. This set won't add anything that we expect to be tournament strong in the formats they're legal in, but it's nice for cube designers and commander players to have access to some of these cards. And once again, that's just one example of things you'll see here. There's definitely some more. Every pack has a bunch of these pure reprint cards, just like the original. And then and there's the future site and white border sheets. Every pack has one of these. We had a lot of fun figuring out what goes on each sheet. Future Sight Frame has lots of stables like Dark Ritual and Soul Ring, and also some cards that are just so at home has some weirdo card that would be in Future Sight, like Graph Digger's Cage or formerly Dreamcast video game exclusive Velikin Dragon. Now there's a deep cut for you. And some of these, like Demonic Consultation, even have new art too. White Bordered had a lot of cards that we thought would be neat to do in White Bordered, like Planeswalkers, staple effects that feel like they could have been in a White Bordered core set, like Preordain or things we just thought would be funny, like snow-covered island. Get it? The white border is the snow. So funny, right? Okay, fine. Anyway, every single pack hopefully brings to you a mix of what in the world is this and I remember this card. And watching everyone open them seemed to do just that. It also led to some pretty wild draft decks and games too. Many of the players said this had the potential to be among their favorite draft formats 
ever. In the end of the two pods drafts, Covert Go Blue took down his pod with an aggressive deck featuring no instants and sorceries at all because he was running him of the wilds. Did I mention reprint conspiracies are here too? Because they are. And James Turner from Loading Ready Run took down his pod with blue black control, splashing white for white bordered Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Literally all five colors represented between the two decks. But when the two champions faced one another, it was the one and best of one, CGB, that took it all down with his Naya Him of the Wilds concoction. What a blast. And I can't wait for you to all play the set too. Mystery Booster 2 will have its big debut at Magicon Vegas, where there will be tons of play events featuring it. As an extension of our conventions, it will also be available in Festival in a Box. Want to see even more cards and have some set details? Me and Blake Rasmussen will be talking about this set on Weekly MTG tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, so be sure to tune into the stream to learn even more. And there's some things I haven't even talked about yet in this set. Like, did I mention that sometimes you get foils? More on that and so much more tomorrow. There are some things I would be pretty surprised if any of you guessed them early. I can't spoil all the mystery now, after all, so tune back in tomorrow. Any cards you saw that have been your favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more on Mystery Booster 2 and thanks for following on this wild adventure with me. And until next time, enjoy unraveling the mystery. You got this. Totally fine. Uh, not, blue is really, not a lot pulling me into blue. I mean, there's some okay cards, except for this Kitnap. This Kitnap is great, but the rest of blue is kind of only okay. Um, so, still looking for something, something to pull me in stronger. Could see myself playing blue because of the Kitnap, but let's see what else we have going on. Now, black is pretty shallow, you know, there's not, not